Hello everyone, welcome back to another portfolio review. My name is Will um, and I continue every couple weeks to go over my portfolio and my investment progress. I think when I first started out this series, I was like maybe at a thousand dollars in each portfolio and since then we've we've come a long ways in gosh, I think this is gonna be sixteen episodes, maybe seventeen. I don't know. I've recorded quite a few and it's probably one of my favorite series that I do and continue to do. Um, right now I'm showing you my one of my portfolios. I have two, one on Robinhood, one on M1 Finance. Um, and right now we're showing the week view. Because last week we were just going up, 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 up. And our portfolio maxed out at $5,425. That was up like nearly 30%. And I invested personally so far into this. 4500 so we were up $900 in like just you know market gains since then we have gone down you know quite a bit I mean it's pretty substantial but we're now finished uh, for the week almost the week we have tomorrow still tomorrow's Friday um, $4,650 so all the time I am still up $150 so that's really cool. But I mean, there was a point where we were up 900. But I mean, like I said, long term, this doesn't matter. Now that things are starting to come down, it gives me an opportunity to buy stuff. Um, and some of you that may have been following the series, you know that every couple weeks I get paid and I usually invest and then I make a video kind of updating it. Um, we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Um, but we also had May finish up you know last week and i got my update for m1 finance i don't think i've done a video since then so we can update that if we did do it in the last video i'm sorry but i said before i plan on doing it either way but we'll just pretend like i haven't done it yet so that's where we are so far um today i did not invest any money because you know with everything kind of still fluctuating there wasn't really anything that i wanted to balance out so i decided to pay 500 dollars on one of my loans um, preferably drug dealer simulator one of my friends is playing that that's interesting I might have to look that up and see what that's about but off topic but I didn't really see anything that I wanted to average out or add a little more so I figured paying on my debt was a little more important this week around um, as you can see the news you know up and down still talking about George Floyd weeks later but yeah just interesting stuff and if we go to history as I do like to show off every once in a while. Just got to wait for it to load. I don't know why, but when I use the browser, it takes a while and it doesn't load right away. Um, I have to stop and then it loads. Um, so June 2nd was when I bought more stuff. That's right. I have a lot to talk about because I haven't showed, showed this off in a while. So what I did is in May... We bought more stuff, and I think that was the last time. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. That was May 1st. That was a long time ago. Well, what I did early... Oh, here we go. Wells Fargo, Coca-Cola, American Airlines. How far back did I go? Oh, this went back way far. So something that I did at the end of the month is I sold off a couple positions. I, if I can find it. So I added JP Morgan, added some more Marathon Oil, had interest paid, dividend, dividend. Huh. I will do, I'll cover it when I get to the stock portfolio piece. But basically, I sold off a bunch of my companies that I just didn't see long-term progress in. And what I did is I put it more into Bank of America. And when we get to the stock portfolio, I'll be able to show that a little bit easier on what I had before and what I sold. Um, my plans are I do want to sell off General Electric because they pay $0.04 cents a year. That's not really something that I see long-term. And they're not paying me a whole lot, so it's not worth keeping. Um, and I'll continue to look through and see what other companies. Right now, I'm pretty much happy with all the other ones that I have. I would like to add more. 
Um, something I might do is like if I have a company, I don't know if I have, I don't think I have this, but if I have it in my um, M1 uh, portfolio, I might sell it off here and maybe just leave it in M1 finance and maybe vice versa. Sell off like I know I have um, Wells Fargo in M1 finance, maybe sell it off there to put more in here. I don't know, but just some ideas of just, you know, balancing out my portfolio and making it better for the long term. Now that I've done a lot more with investing and I've learned a little bit more, I've decided more on what I don't want in companies and what I'm looking for. I guess before we head over to M1 Finance, let's take a look at the stock portfolio here. So as you can see, I have um, cut down on the number of companies I've had. If we just slide over to the dividends tab, last go around we had uh, Lloyd's LYG, which was like Lloyd's Banking Group. We had um, BPI, I think this was Prudential Bank that I sold off. We had Mazda that I sold off. Um, MJ was like a marijuana ETF. I just didn't see anything from that, so I sold that off as well. Um, and then I sold off Zanga, which was the free stock that Robinhood gave me. And then GLU U Mobile, Glue Mobile. And um, one other... Uh, free stock that Robinhood gave me. So I kind of sold off the ones that weren't paying dividends to invest it. And I'm pretty sure I bought AT&T is what I ended up doing if we take a peek at the history. Because I think it does show that I bought those, but it doesn't show the sold, which it does on my app. So I don't know what's up with the browser. It's clearly not as advanced as the app is, which I guess is good because that's all I ever really use is the app. Um. So yeah, I bought two more shares of AT&T for $30 and then Bank of America. I was able to average down just a tiny bit at twenty four seventy. So I had $90 that I got from selling my stock. So it was definitely way worth it. Um, and really quick, this is what we've got for upcoming dividends. Really excited uh, to see more of these pop up every day, it seems like. Um, Duke is going to be paying me next week, it looks like, possibly the 16th, 17th. And then a lot of them will be in the last couple weeks. So still some money to be made this month. Um, but yeah, not much more to talk about that than what I just did. Um, M1 Finance is kind of in the similar story. We earlier in the week had our portfolio go up to 4757, which, you know, is an all time high. Everything was in green at that point. We can see that stuff has gone down, but that's okay. Nothing to worry about. I mean, if we look at the last week, maybe if we look at the last month, there we go. <laughs> if we look at the last week, we're down the $190, but if we look at the last month, we're a little bit better. Uh, the quarter we've gone up, the year still down overall and all time. Um, $9 in the bank doesn't happen very often. Um, we've been getting dividends here and there. I'm actually kind of surprised we have as much sitting in the account as it is. You know, a couple more cents and it'll automatically reinvest for me. So that's really cool to see that we can finally start getting to the point where this will hopefully start to snowball and work its way up. Because um, now we're starting to get sizable dividends. I mean, if we look at the last couple weeks or so, Aflac and Wells Fargo, Visa, um, bonds and ETFs. I think these are, yeah, index funds. Um, Pfizer paid me, Amgen, um, Southern Co., Johnson & Johnson, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, Target. Just every morning I'm waking up with a dividend here and there. So, And as we talked about with Robin or Robin Hood, and we'll kind of point at that out again, is every three months you get paid a lot more. And right now we're in that you know, sixth month, but that third month in the cycle where you get paid more. So I'm going to see quite a bit this month in dividends. So that's you know, really awesome. And I know I say that a lot, but it is. Investing money is fun. It's a very adult thing to do, it seems. But, you know, what other times in your life do you spend money and earn money from it? You know, this is an asset. These are assets. I'm putting money in assets that are paying me to buy more assets. It just makes sense. Um, at least to me, it does. It just clicks. Um, and it's, it's just like, it's mind-blowing that I put money into these companies 
and they pay me. That's all I have to do. I don't have to work for them. They just pay me the money. So, so anyway, we're peeking back over again, and you can see that you know last week everything was green. Now we're starting to see a little a couple things red. Um, you know, investing would have been not so bad because I could average down my wells, probably go a little bit more, but it doesn't matter because we're up fourteen dollars. I'm okay with that. It should be a little bit more, but so anyway, this is what I was talking about before, where it's these dividends pay in generally a three month cycle. Excuse me. I ate food, so I have the hiccups now. I mean, there are certain companies that pay, you know, February, May, uh, August, uh, November. And there are some companies that pay January, April, uh, July, October. But a lot of the companies pay March, June, September, December. And then there's a small few that only pay once a year in December or every month or maybe June and December. So there will be patterns that start to form, and hopefully we can kind of see that. I'm starting to see some of them form now. I mean, even last year, small, small, big, small, small, big, small, small, big. So I'm just seeing that snowballing start to grow, and we'll see that on the M1 portfolio as well. But because of how it's formatted and getting fractional shares, it's not as apparent as this one. So it might be something that maybe I want to bump up you know, the January, April, July, I'm maybe messing it up, October cycle and maybe put some more in those companies. But at the end of the day, I'm just evenly dividing my money as best as I can into companies that I think are worthwhile and it's going up. So as you can see for this year, we're at slash projected for $50, which is over 10 times what we got last year. But again, with a grain of salt, we only started in September, but it is what it is. So that's kind of that pattern that I was talking about. The other thing too is I actually want to talk about this chart is I had it incorrectly formatted. If we look at this up here, it you know shows you know which boxes it's highlighting. I actually was like missing out on a couple, so it wasn't totally accurate. So now with eliminating the companies that weren't really paying me squat or worth my time, I also made sure that this was correctly formatted. I increased my yearly income by two bucks because I invested in better companies, better quality companies. And now we're at $257. I don't remember what it was on the last video, but I know it wasn't quite right. Maybe like 225. So <laughs> I've magically discovered 25 more dollars a year in uh, dividend income a year. So, and as I always like to do it, let me slide my calculator over here. 257 times the next 40 years. That's an extra $10,000 in income that can be reinvested in this portfolio. Plus that $10,000 will then add into more income. And yeah, I could pull it out every year and have $257 to go on a nice dinner. But why not reinvest it and make it grow? So I just wanted to show you this. I did it 6-2. So that was... Yeah, that was like a Tuesday. So I probably didn't have a video recorded. So that was what I was doing one day at work. <laughs> it was pretty slow, let's say. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I have this accurate as possible, as I try to do. So that's where we're sitting now with uh, Robinhood. Let's take a look at M1 Finance. I got that updated for May. I don't know when it officially came out. Probably like the 4th, 3rd or 4th. Um, but we ended the month at $4,393.05, earning that month eight twenty one. dollars Awesome. So it changed my average a little bit. Last time I was talking about this, we kept saying how every month we were just a little bit over the average. Well, because we had such a huge jump, you know, $3, huge jump, um, it brought my whole average up. So now I've only had two months that are up and above but i'm sure this month is gonna blow that out of the water because we're already sitting on nine dollars alone um i think let me just delete that Did that do anything nope uh there was if i like remove this it was supposed to be like fifty dollars a year was my average before and now we're up to eighty dollars um so as we add more numbers into this chart it'll start to even out a little more and be a little more accurate but $80 here, I, for fun, we'll just do that as well. So 80 times the next 40 years, that's $3,000. Not totally right, because if I look at my uh, Robinhood 
or excuse me, M1 Finance like chart at the end of the month, it's predicting like $150. So it's a little bit more than what this chart is explaining. But again, not as many numbers have been entered in and we have some zeros and some low numbers entered. A lot of information, sorry. But you can see that we're growing our portfolio at a good, nice pace. But yeah, this list is the average monthly income. The blue is the average. Black is the actual. So again, we've been above the last couple. And you can see my actual monthly income has been increasing. And again, we're talking about the one, two, or one, two, three, big jump. One, two, three, jump. One, two, and we'll probably even see it go higher. And that's exactly what I want to see. But after that three-month cycle, the next month will be a little lower. That's just how it is. Um, portfolio income, you can see that huge jump up. I'm excited to see where we'll be at the end of June. Um, pretty much all my bills are paid for the month now. So my next check, which I got paid today, so we'll get paid then, I think, next month. One, two, three. Yeah, next month will be a three-check three month. So that will be another big month. I'm sure we'll see. Um, that for sure. But yeah, the next check is going to be um, pretty much investing. Um, and then you can see my yearly income and how that's averaging up. By April of next year, we should be, um, let me see, April of next year, it's predicting that I'll be at $180, which is awesome to see. And that's if I don't really do anything more than what I'm already doing. But I think this is a uh, written in with projections so that's how it is but yeah so that's my may update on there um the last thing i want to go over is my net worth tracker i have not updated it so it's kind of a waste of showing it but again for people that aren't familiar with my channel don't pop by haven't seen this before i keep track month to month of my assets and my liabilities liabilities are going to be your debt i have a personal loan for a watch that i purchased as my graduation present you can see that it started at quite a bit, and we've brought it down quite a bit as well. Um, and then the last one is my car loan. Fairly obvious for a lot of people. Um, I bought a new car, paying on it. Once this watch is paid off, all the money that I pay on the watch will go towards the car, hopefully paying it down sooner. And we are close to being under $10,000 for total loan liability. That's awesome. Assets. Let's talk about the first three over here. At the end of the day, cars are still worth money. You can sell them. Whether or not these are totally accurate, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, that's stuff that people will, you know, it's variable on what people will pay for it. The watch is also the same deal. It just depends on what someone's going to pay for it that day. It changes month to month. It goes up, it goes down. And at the end of the day, these are assets in the sense that I can sell them for what someone will buy them. These other assets are a lot more liquid and that's more important these specifically generate me money these hold my money so that's just something to keep in mind there's many different asset classes there's real estate there's commodities these are kind of more in that commodity section where they have some inherent value but they don't do anything for you so it's better to buy assets like these you know retirement account too rather than assets like these buying a boat buying a house they have that liability because you're constantly sinking money into them. These don't cost you anything unless they're managed by someone. They generate you money. That's way better. Um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way. That I'm keeping track of all of it, but know the difference between the two. Um, and you can see my net worth is continuing to grow. I like to try to keep this chart above. We've had a couple months where we went down, but that happens. We had to take money out of our savings to pay off credit cards and whatnot. Um, hopefully by next video, I can have it more accurately up to date. Mostly these two and oops, these ones right here, not up to date at all in any fashion. I just wanted to get this video out for you guys today. Um, just talk about this and what I've talked about. But as you can see from last month to this month, I just put $500 and took that off. So probably be a little different as some will go towards the principal, some will go towards the interest. And I didn't update my debt snowball either, but same premise, very nice uh, chart to look at. Um, I saw someone do this. I recreated it and I thought it was great. Whether you do the debt snowball, debt avalanche, I happen to be doing both. 
Um, this chart is very motivational. Um, for those of you maybe unfamiliar, the debt snowball is always paying your lowest balance first and working towards your highest balance. The debt avalanche is paying your highest interest first, no matter the balance, and paying the lowest interest last. Well, lucky for me, my lowest balance and my highest interest is first, no matter what, with both those methods. So mathematically and emotionally, I'm still paying the best way possible. So I'm very fortunate in that sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're still doing well. I had these updated from what they were like last week when they were at their highs. So I just wanted to feel good about myself. These have come down, so that will change it a little bit. Um, I've also gotten paid and put money elsewhere. So some changes need to be made, but you know, just don't want to talk about it because sometimes people are interested. But as we go, this is for the long term. I'm now in the green at least from my beginning journey and it feels good. Hopefully things can turn back around, but everyone's talking about the bleak future and I don't see it. I'm in this for the long run. And again, I want to thank you guys for stopping by a little bit shorter to average than normal, but had a lot of information to cover. I hope to see you guys in a couple more weeks. I'll probably get another one posted. Probably the end of June would be my guess. So keep an eye out for that next video. But thank you so much, guys. Have a good day and stay healthy.